Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of House Arrest by Alan Bennett. So these are his pandemic diaries. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, even though, I don't know if there is one. Yeah, there is one. Uh, then I'm going to check out my tabs and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So the blurb. Dane reads. February 2020 to March 2021, a year in and out of lockdown. Alan Bennett's diary takes us from the filming of Talking Heads to thoughts on Boris Johnson, from his father's short-lived craze for family fishing trips to stair lifts, junk shops of old, having a haircut and encounters on the local park bench. A lyrical afterword describes the journey home to Yorkshire from King's Cross Station via fish and chips on Quebec Street, past childhood landmarks of Leeds through Coniston Cold over the Infant River Air and on. So, let's read some of these out. They, just some highlights from the entries here. So this is very prophetic, the first entry, the 21st, 24th of February. Last week, Rupert and his whole magazine were thrown into confusion when, for no apparent reason, the management inquired how many of the team could work from home. This was taken to be the prelude of some sort of shedding of staff. Today, it transpires it's less inimical than this, but rather a precaution. The coronavirus in Italy has meant the Milan office has had to close. The inquiry in case a similar situation should arise in London. This is thought to be unlikely. Hmm, very unlikely. So he mentions that he enjoys writing the introductions to his plays more than writing the plays himself, which I can kind of tell from reading his introductions. He does a good job with those. Uh, 14th of March, he wrote, As an over 70, I'm officially exhorted to remain isolated and indoors, which is to say that my usual going on now has governmental endorsement. And then on the 20th of March, With Rupert now working from home, my life is much easier as I get regular cups of tea and a lovely hot lunch. And here is uh, some of his thoughts on politics. So on the 11th of May, Boris Johnson's address to the nation in the evening, pretty pointless. Stay alert, meaning nothing. He's such a poor orator and speaker generally. One almost feels sorry for him, with the plainness of Keir Starmer, a relief. He mentions the poetry in motion programmes, which I read recently, although I haven't actually, um, haven't actually see, like, seen them. So I thought this just made me chuckle. 30th of May. Someone, re someone writes to me a propos my piece on Hardy and Six Poets, recounting the story of Hardy getting down on his hands and knees in the middle of a flock of sheep and pretending to eat the grass in order to see what it was like to be a sheep. To the person's surprise, they behaved exactly as they did in the story, gathering round to watch. A second go, though, was met with utter indifference. 19th of July. There are many depressing items of news in today's Observer, but the most lowering is that, on account of his support for Brexit, Ian Botham is thought likely to be raised to the peerage. That is depressing. He quotes, on the 4th of September, he quotes uh, Lucian Freud, what your work does is tell people you've been alive. And I just want to read this final entry out, um, 26th of November, and this is because it's about Graham Greene, who's one of my favourite authors. A new biography of Graham Greene, not read, like I have to confess, most of his work. I've been put off by the Catholicism showing through in his frequent rare, and his frequent rare interviews. A darling of the Sunday papers in the 1960s, he was always said to be retiring while in fact being avid for publicity. Any misgivings I had were confirmed the only time I met him in 1977. I had a play running in the West End, the old country, with Alec Guinness. Wordy, I think it now, and thin on plot, it was an account of a foreign office defector now living in Soviet Russia, who was being tempted home, possibly to face the music. It had good reviews, though journalists and even some critics persisted in taking Hillary, the spy, to represent or be based on Kim Philby. This had never been my intention, with Auden more the model and exile the subject, though the misconception doubtless did the box office no harm. In the course of the run, various luminaries came around after the show to see AG, with him telling me to come myself one night as Graham Greene would be in the audience. I duly turned up, but remember little of the conversation. There wasn't much conversation to remember. My abidingest memory only that Green's was the limpest hand I'd ever shaken. Nor did he say a word about the play, for or against. It may be that, as a friend and persistent advocate of Philby's, he had, like some of the newspapers, misidentified Alec as Philby. Whatever it was, I thought it a graceless performance. However, a few nights later, another visitor wiped away the memory. This was Coral Brown, funny, gossipy, and who had even liked the play, relating it to her own experiences in Moscow, where she had met Guy Burgess and giving me, readily plotted, another play in An Englishman Abroad. I uh, read all these plays as well, so that was fun. But yeah, House Arrest by Alan Bennett. I gave this a four out of five. I've read some of Bennett's diaries in the past, but to be honest, they're normally... It's hard going, because you've got like years and years worth of diary entries. So for me, they're normally classic bedtime books, but this one was just easy to read because it was shorter. And also it deals with the pandemic, which is obviously, you know, a historic moment. I think in years to come, people will look back at Bennett's diary here um, for an insight into what the pandemic was like. So yeah, I gave it four out of five. So there you have it, that's my quick and easy, cheerful and all that review of Alan Bennett's House Arrest Pandemic Diaries. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.